Hello everyone, I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. Welcome to today's episode of Dr. Ozello's Sports Medicine Report. Today I'm going to cover pectoralis minor insertion tendinopathy. This is a common injury. It is also known as bench presses shoulder. It is very common in weightlifters, especially bodybuilders, especially young bodybuilders who do a lot of bench presses. This is a condition that is fairly common, and this is a condition that isn't really talked about too often, but it can contribute to poor posture, and it can contribute to pain and dysfunction of the shoulder. The pectoralis minor is a triangular-shaped muscle that is deep to the pectoralis major. The origin is the third, fourth, and fifth ribs close to the respective costal cartilages. The insertion is the medial border and upper surface of the coracoid process of the scapula. The concentric actions of the pec minor are scapular protraction and shoulder depression. It is also an accessory breathing muscle because it helps to elevate the ribs. The innervation of the pectoralis minor muscle is the medial pectoral nerve, which is from vertebral levels C8 and T1. Symptoms of pectoralis minor insertion tendinopathy include pain in the pectoralis minor tendon, with active contraction of the pectoralis minor muscle. Tenderness upon palpation of the medial coracoid process. Tenderness upon palpation of the insertion tendon of the pectoralis minor. Tightness in the pectoralis minor with scapular retraction in a positive bench press maneuver. Individuals with shorter pectoralis minor muscle length have incorrect scapular movement patterns similar to those reported in individuals with shoulder pain secondary to subacromial impingement syndrome, rotator cuff disease, and glenohumeral instability. Tight pectoralis minor muscles can, can create a position of scapular protraction at rest and does not allow scapular posterior tilt or external rotation upon arm motion, predisposing patients to subacromial impingement syndrome. So this is telling us that tightness of the pectoralis minor muscle can lead to other shoulder conditions, including subacromial impingement. Tightness of the pectoralis minor muscle and pectoralis minor insertion tendinopathy are huge contributing factors to a postural fault known as upper cross syndrome. Pectoralis minor insertion tendinopathy often has an insidious onset where the pain starts to occur, especially during training or after training, and then it progresses in frequency and in intensity. The pain is often dull and directed right in the pectoralis minor insertion tendon where it inserts at the coracoid process. To test to see if you have tightness or shortening of the pectoralis minor muscle, you can lay supine on a floor or on a bench, relax your shoulders with your hands placed on your stomach, and let the posterior aspect of the shoulder drop towards the table. It is positive if the scapula stay protracted and the shoulder is lifted off the table. This would indicate hypertonicity or shortening of the pectoralis minor muscle. Another procedure that can be performed to test to see if pectoralis minor insertion tendinopathy is present is called the bench press maneuver. You lay supine and you sim simulate a bench press against resistance. If there is pain in the pectoralis minor muscle, that indicates that there is pectoralis minor insertion tendinopathy again, which is also known as bench presser's shoulder, and is also known as pectoralis minor overuse insertion tendinopathy. If you have pain in the pectoralis minor muscle, or if you think you have pectoralis minor insertion tendinopathy, see a medical professional immediately for evaluation, diagnosis, and a treatment plan. Do not self-diagnose. Please, see a medical professional if you think you have this condition to set you on your path to recovery. Never perform an exercise that elicits or intensifies symptoms. If an exercise elicits or intensifies symptoms, you want to stop immediately and find a viable substitute. You always want to work through a symptom-free range of motion when performing any 
exercise. Never push an exercise into a range of motion that elicits or intensifies symptoms. When you see a medical professional, you can see a doctor of chiropractic like myself, or you can see another type of medical professional. As a doctor of chiropractic, I have seen this condition in my office many times. As a doctor of chiropractic, I would check the cervical spine, which is the medical name for the neck, the thoracic spine, which is the medical name for the mid-back. I would check the rib cage and the entire shoulder area. You want to make sure that the entire chain is working properly. I would perform a chiropractic treatment on the neck, mid-back, rib cage, shoulder, and entire upper extremity to restore proper skeletal motion and to optimize proper nerve flow to those areas. This is a condition that is caused by overuse and poor training. So you want to make sure that you modify your treatment plan. Many times this occurs because of poor technique and inadequate rest between training sessions. That's why it's sometimes called pectoralis minor overuse insertion tendinopathy because this is an overuse injury. The modification of training should include more rest and recuperation between training sessions. Also, you can try using lighter weights with a higher number of repetitions and you can modify your technique. Speak to an athletic trainer or a fitness trainer to learn proper technique. This way it'll help you to prevent any type of injury, including overuse injuries like pectoralis minor insertion tendinopathy. You also want to make sure that you perform stretching exercises after you are finished training. Never perform slow static stretches before your training. You want to perform a warm-up, which includes dynamic motions through a symptom-free range of motion. Then after your training, as part of your cool down or during your rest and recovery days, you can perform slow static stretches. When you stretch, you want to move into the stretch slowly and hold a mild, comfortable stretch, then move out of the stretch slowly. This will help to reduce muscle tension. If you have pectoralis minor insertion tendinopathy, then you want to stretch the pec minor, the pec major, the anterior ribcage muscles, and you can also stretch the serratus anterior muscles and the lats. This is going to help you to prevent any tightness in those muscles. If you stretch the pec minor, the pec major, the anterior ribcage muscles, if you stretch the serratus anterior and the latissimus dorsi muscle, it will help to improve your upper body posture and it will help to reduce muscle tension. Pectoralis minor insertion tendinopathy is a nagging injury that can halt your progress and lead to frustration. So you want to use every tool that you possibly can to prevent this injury. That includes having a good, solid training routine that promotes proportional strength in the shoulder between the posterior shoulder muscles and the anterior shoulder muscles. Also, you want to make sure that you do a proper cool down that includes slow static stretches of the chest muscles and the anterior ribcage muscles. You can also stretch the serratus anterior and the latissimus dorsi muscles. Thank you everybody for watching today's episode of Dr. Ozella Sports Medicine Report, where I covered the pectoralis minor insertion tendinopathy, which is also known as bench presser's shoulder. I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am the author of Running maximize performance and minimize injuries. You can visit my website, championshipchiropractic.com, where you can get additional information on the book and you can also see my blog. My blog contains articles on spine health, sports medicine, chiropractic care, health, fitness, and nutrition. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Please feel free to like this video. If you have questions, feedback, or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Please subscribe to my YouTube page and always remember to train hard, but train smart. Get adequate rest between training sessions. Utilize nutritional and supplementation strategies that work for you. Stay injury-free and accomplish your goals.